So hello everyone and welcome to this special edition uh, episode. We're joined today by Federico from Big Brother 4. How are you? I'm whelmed. Not underwhelmed, not overwhelmed, just whelmed. whelmed. Do you know, you look a little bit like um, Jack in the Titanic. Denzel Washington. <laughs> You remind me of um, Leonardo DiCaprio in Titanic. Like, no, not that young. Leonardo DiCaprio is just getting thicker and heavier set and doesn't give a <laughs> fuck anymore about anything. I was just talking before we come on. I love those pictures behind you. The Beach Boys. I know, that was, I was gullible with that. I feel embarrassed. That was good. You were like, I really like those pictures. It's like, I love the Beach Boys, man. And I'm like, oh yeah, it looks really good. Uh, but first yes, of all, we were gutted we couldn't get you on the the reunion because we had a lot of the Big Brother Four. I'm not sure if you watched the episode, but I did. I watched it. You've you've been doing some amount of graft. You've had to sit through some utterly mundane, terminally dull bullshit, haven't you? <laughs> what did you think? Did you think there was any bullshit in the Big Brother Four episode that we showed? To be honest, the the. They are sincere in the fact that everyone was so nice and everyone was civilised and middle class and I, I, I wrote a column about it and I said like it was the sort of people you would know you live next door to but the problem is you're fucking bored of your next door neighbour aren't you? <laughs> well I was going to ask you actually what do you think about people that refer to Big Brother 4 as the most boring series and stuff? What are your opinions of that being a housemate of the show? I mean, do you understand think, why people say that? I think, I think, from what I understand, I spoke to some producers after it. We were invited to, you know, your usual assortment of hedonism and madness and Soho House. You know, we saw the, we saw the Illuminati and stuff like that, the Virgin Blood and things like that. So the producers, they, they divulged with me. And um, they said to me that there was like a, a bit of a mistake in the casting process. They thought that... They would maybe cast people who were who were less vulgar because they'd had some issues the year before with I think it was um, like Jade and things like that and so I think they were more stringent and then they, they realised that really the core audience probably wants things like sex violence acrimony yeah. dispute probably would work better as a processor if they would put you know a vicar in beside a porn star uh, uh, an Islamic leader in beside Tommy Robinson you know I think I, th I think stuff like that works for the audience. And it's true in a sense that they did put in people who, I was only 20, I just turned 23 actually. So I probably would have been more uh, sort of, I would, have, I would have been very, very happy to go along with some like hedonism and madness and, and people being uh, sort of cliches at that age. But it was like, everyone was very sensible. And they are like, our, our family business in, in Glasgow is restaurants. And I always say like, Everyone who was on Big Brother at that time could have been like a, a, a guest in the restaurant and very civil and they'd put their cutlery part in the right place and they would have been lovely to the waiters and left a nice review, you know. So they were they were very lovely. I, like, apart from Lisa, who I missed, I think Lisa uh, was, was more in tune to, they put her in later on to try and bring back the car crash element to it, you know. Yeah. Um what I did want to ask, I always remember when I watched back clips of your series was when you were getting told off in the diary room. I can't remember what you'd asked, Big Brother, um, but it was something... I was doing, I was doing an avid Merrigan impression because at that time, remember how big Bo Selector was? Yeah. And to be fair, in my mind, I was probably trying to get on Bo Selector, which I was, I was on Bo Selector a couple of times after it. It was that I was that calculated and fucking, you know, at that time, even though it was still quite of a social experiment in the, easy days, in the early days, we were all caught in and on to what was happening and the kind of subcultures around it. So I probably was, I was doing an avid Merian impression as I would love to say, you'll have a shit, oh my God, and all this like nonsense. <laughs> and, uh, and they took it literally, and which is fair, it was like, it's, it's, it's not really an Orwellian process, it's a TV show. So they used that as a little way to say, don't be asking the girl who's the producer behind the camera to take a shit instead of like <laughs> the Orwellian entity. But a good story about Avid Merian was the first time I met, well, was like, I got a phone call after it. And the producer was like, yeah, yeah, I see what you've been doing. And of course, like, you know, fed, you can come on. No problem, son, no problem. He's like, yeah. I said, okay, that's brilliant. I'd love to be on the show. And they're like, but what's my fee? And I was just bullshitting, you know, like I actually wanted a fee. I would have done it for nothing. He's like, 100 quid. He's like, that's great because I've done it for nothing. You know, and he was like, he was laughing. He's like, you just come on, I've got 100 quid for you. And the very first time that I met uh, Lee, who is Avid, Lee yeah. Francis, 
he was wearing a pair of Y fronts with my face on the Y fronts, and he, he was naked apart from that, and he just started dry humping me in the street. That's amazing. I'm fuck you, Federico. So I was like, you know, I was obviously riffing off that, and I was like, at the time, Davina McCall was pregnant. I was like, let's fuck Davina McCall together. She is pregnant. He was so he, he knew I was. He, he knew it was a there was someone that watched the show, and I liked it at the time. You know what I did want to ask you when you first went into the house and you met your fellow housemates for the first time. What were your first impressions on them? Did you kind of think, oh, I'm going to get on with them? Did you think there was someone in particular that you would get really close to? What were your just general really, impressions? I did really like Anushka, who yeah. I think I think she was the first in, wasn't she? It does get a bit hazy because, like, see from 2003 to 2009, like, if, if, if camera phones were in mass proliferation back then and they were everywhere, I'd probably be in Guantanamo Bay just now. So that, that that whole period of my life was a fucking Pete Doherty level cliche, you know. I, I I was being I was I was being every stereotype. I was a stereotype of a stereotype in many ways. So I I don't remember a lot because of that little chemical haze I was in for about six years after it. And uh, and, and I'm um, I'm happy to admit that. So from what what I can remember, uh, I really liked Anushka, uh, which was subsequently rubbish because she left and I got on with her a lot in the first week and uh, do you know all this stuff are you, are you like you are you blagging that you actually care about Big Brother just to get some views no, out I this? love it and do you know um, Big Brother 4 because I mean I I watched it from Big Brother 5 but I when I loved Big Brother I then caught up with all the other series and when I went in there I liked you and I was always a Cameron fan I, I, yeah, I found I mean, it endearing yeah, it's phenomenal <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I, I, I'm a virgin, you know, he was, uh, the great thing about Cameron is, uh, in retrospect, I realised how, how clever and smart he was, you know, it was, yeah. it was a wonderful angle, and that is good, that's the nature of the game, it's a game show, and, um, and, and when uh, Cameron's someone that speaks to a lot now, you know, because you try to get the subs, the pre by the way, I apologise for not coming on that last time, but that night, I just couldn't be asked, like, faking to care about anything. <laughs> so tonight, I, I, I feel like... Then I was telling... The, uh, I was lying today, I'm telling the truth, so I, I feel like uh, I'm predisposed to bullshit and then um, and fake it and phone it in today, you know? No, I mean, it's good to get you on. And it was it was good to get them on, because, I mean, they did Why you not have really a drink? Well. You what, sorry? Have a drink. You have to go into your fridge and open the first alcoholic beverage that you have. Genuinely? Yeah, do it, man. I'm having a cool <laughs> What have I here? I hope it's something like blue WKD or pineapple Bacardi Breezer. That's how the internet works. What have I got here? Bomas Cider. Fucking hell, we're both cider drinkers, all apple cider drinkers. I normally drink Rattler. Do you know Rattler? Have you ever had that before? Yeah, I've, I'm, I, I know it very well. It's lovely. Yeah. Slips um, down the throat like the devil in silk trousers. <laughs> um, what did, you, did you find anything difficult in the house? Is there something that stands out to you as being the most difficult moment? Sleeping. Well, you just couldn't Sleeping sleep there. Difficult. Because... I, I get insomnia anyway. You probably realise I'm a weirdo. So I, I, I do suffer from insomnia and probably I realise this more now because I was so young when I'd done it, but you're, you're sleeping in a game show. So you can actually like, and I was sleeping next to John Tickle who literally is like a fucking piece of cattle, you know. He makes noises that are otherworldly at night time, you know. It was like the satanic verses at night time behind him, <laughs> besides him. And uh, so I was there, I wasn't, I wasn't behind them. So he, uh, behind me, there were camera runs, full of cameramen, because everyone thinks it's like robotic cameras everywhere, and there are like, at the time there were remote controlled cameras, but there were actual cameramen in the run. So at night time, my, my mind becomes restless, you know, I'm a nocturnal beast. And he, and I could hear like uh, cameramen, like changing shifts and talking about, I couldn't really hear what they were saying, but I knew they were like having snacks and crisps and shit like that behind me. You know, so I knew people were filming asleep. And I'm just like the sort of person that, even if, even if a lot of people like, you, you forget the cameras are there. Oh my God, what? totally, you forget the cameras are there. Like they do all this spiel and they've got the fucking sound bites and the shit. You don't forget the cameras are there. 
you, you were always aware of it. Of course you're always aware yeah. of it. That's why reality TV is such a misnomer. It's not reality TV. It's a TV game show. And then people will say, like, after, oh, well, they, they edited me badly. Well, it's a fucking editing machine. That's what it is. What, what side have you got there? Is it a pear Copperberg? Mm-hmm. Sorry, I said apple. It's pear, yeah. Pear. I like um, pear. There's, um, what's the other one? It's like, um, col condom, what was uh, colander or something like that. Recorded leg? Co that's it, that's it. I was, I was talking about like Scots Islands, colander and the Isle of Skye. Um, so, uh, that one's great. The one that's passion fruit's good in that. See, I, I like very, um, so I like cider yeah. drinkers. You, you can always, tr you can always trust them. Available, of course, but I, uh, I'm drinking metrosexually. You know? In Glasgow <laughs> region, basically, you are a homosexual if you have one of those and own a satchel. <laughs> or do you think you're um, what stands out for you as the funniest moment for you with your experience in Big Brother? In Big Brother. That silence means something, you know. That said, uh, do you know, I think you're confirming everyone's opinion on Big Brother Series 4. Where it was a mistake. They did make a mistake. The casting, I heard, I heard subsequently that heads rolled, people were replaced, because it was a poor casting, you know. It was a poor casting, ultimately, for uh, a very good moral and, uh, shall we say, like, Reasons that, that, that can't really be criticised in terms of the people were good. They were good people. They uh, almost like, I remember, I'm, I'm talking about like third party or that wasn't there. And I was there. And everyone was like making packs very earlier on not to be, you know, not to be manipulated. And we won't yeah. be the series that falls out. And we'll be different, you know. And I remember there was a book signing in Soho House after it. Oh, no, actually, the Channel 4's uh, studios, the old ones that used to be in London. And we were doing like, we had to sign the books for people who, the kind of people that would actually be interested in buying a Big Brother book, you know? So, um, the pillars of society, shall we say, you know? The kind of people that are infesting sub-comment sections on YouTube videos, that septic tank of human beings. So the kind of people that are really interested in, in understanding what Big Brother housemates star signs are and stuff like that, they would buy the book. And, and some of the producers, like, they sort of said, the mistake we made in this one was, was like, aiming at people who maybe had a higher IQ than normal and they should, they should, they should, should possibly look to bringing that down to single digit IQ again. You know, I've never asked this question yet to anyone in these um, reunion episodes, but if you could, I don't know if you've watched shows before or after your series, but if you could have been in any other series of Big Brother, is there one that you would have liked to have been in? Uh, well, to be completely transparent, I only really ever saw yeah, the one before, four. I'd done Big Brother because it was a bet with my, uh, the World Cup was on the year before, and my um, my friend, we were watching a game, and, I, and he flicked it to Big Brother, and I gave him this torrent of abuse that he was like, the, you know, the fucking worst of the worst of subhuman for even, what kind of fucking idiot would do Big Brother? <laughs> I used to write on the columns, whenever, I, because I could file copy after it, and because I'd written some stuff before, whenever I, I came out, I got lots of column gigs, and I used to start every column from the premise of like, what kind of fucking idiot would do this? And then it would, you know, this, the absolutely sinking realisation that the fucking idiot is here, that's writing this piece, you know? But um, um, yes, I, uh, what was the point I was making? So the people that were on it were, were, were very much miscasted, yeah. Yeah. Um, but what I want to talk to, you know, I asked everyone on the, the call, which is what life's been like since Big Brother for you. So tell us, you know, the last... A uh, few years. What have you been doing? What was life like? Because it must be a whirlwind when you come out of the house, and then you must be offered interviews, work. Yeah, uh, when I came out of the house, the the news of the world still existed. Does the people still exist? This, which is like a kind of southern tabloid. Does that still exist? Never heard of that. Good, good. It has no reason to exist. So I can expand on the story now. Uh, so these were the tabloids, and like when you tell millennials. Uh, are people that came a few years after. I don't know, like, I think I'm like five years away from a millennial, so all the other crowd. You tell them about tabloids and Sunday tabloids and the news of the world and that mud up arm. They, they sort of, they don't realise how much they affected culture. They only see a world through maybe like a social media or like this is the Amazon prism. But they, uh, these, these like um, Sunday newspapers dictated the discourse of the nation and they were fucking like 
tawdry and asinine and horrible things. So when I um, when I done the Big Brother, I came out and there was a bidding war between the People newspaper and the News of the World. You have to do like an interview, right? So I was evicted with John Tickle, who at the press conference after it, like took this noble sense. I refuse to speak to the tabloid media. You do not understand irony. I will not speak to you. So he was, uh, he was doing that thing and it was hilarious. So what happened was they all started bidding for a first interview and I said, I will talk to you and be insincere with any of you cunts, basically. You know, I said, it's no problem. So we had to, do you have to bleep this kind of stuff out? Is no, not at all, you're fine. So I can say anything? Anything you want. That's how the internet works, that's wonderful. So I, um, so I I'd sort of had, there was two newspapers offering more money than more money than more money for a first interview and photo shoot. So it got to the point where there was this, um, I think like PR company handling or handling the offers coming in. So he's like, he's like, so they've offered, I kept playing them off each other and saying, ask for more, ask for more. So the people offered, well, the, the news of the world offered 25,000 pounds. Wow. And the people uh, in, in old money, you know, before um, civilization has fallen in the post COVID world, when only Bitcoin, is it worth anything now? This was this was this was paper money, so uh, we had to so we had to I had to choose basically. So it was the, the people had offered the same amount twenty five thousand plus a date with Jodie Marsh. Does she still about Jodie Marsh? The people I know, yeah, still? I know of her. I'm just trying to work out how they can offer that to you in the deal. So they prostituted. She they, they facilitated Jodie Marsh's flesh uh, of an evening, uh, and I was like, okay, I'll take the twenty five thousand pounds without the date with Jodie Marsh, please. So I accepted, I just, on, 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 I said, there's no way I can take Jodie Marsh out uh, and that's never going to happen. So we said, let's go with the news as well. So that's what happened when I came out. And that kind of process of like fucking Salvador Dali-esque, crazed fucking, nothing, no, nothing made sense, you know. It was, um, it was surreal. So that happened for, that, that happened for years after it. It was very, very funny. Uh, and there was t t times when I really regretted what I was doing. There was times when I thought, I'm going to have to go back to Glasgow and sort myself out. And, uh, but yeah, there was, a few, there, was, there was a few years where everything that you would think on a little checklist of a person that does Big Brother you'd have to do, I pretty much done. By the way, does Jodie Marsh know this story about her being offered out as part of a deal. Did you have you ever spoken to her? I have no idea. Wow, that's incredible. So, I a, yeah, I, I, at the time we were, uh, you, you had commodities for a, a small period of time until like the next raft of yeah. reality TV contestants arrived. So we were going to, we were getting offered to go to the openings of nights and you know, there'd be helicopters there and an appearance fee, so I mean, I was 23 years old, it was better than working for a living, you know? Yeah, and as course. I say, because, because there was no camera phones and no social media, it meant I wasn't going to be detained in one time Bay, so I was happy. And what do you do now then? What's life like for you now, uh, all these years later, and what do you do for work, that kind of stuff? I, I don't really want to bore you too much, but I, when I left, I obviously, I was lucky that the family business was there. So there was a, there's been a couple of restaurants in the family business that I've looked after. Uh, I had about 19 failed businesses. I realised I am terrible at that. So I just kind of have to ride on the coattails of the family business, more or less, you know. So are you a chef then? Or I like you... starting things, but I don't really know like, maintaining and ending them, you know. I get, I, 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 I'm, motivated, I'm motivated by the process of like creating something, but then when it happens, it's, I was like, is that it? You know, rubbish. So you said about the family restaurants. What are you a chef? Do you work in the kitchen? What what's your involvement with that? Thankfully, for all concerned, I cook nothing. Um, uh, in the family restaurants, my dad, my, my both my parents are basically chefs. So my dad's a qualified chef, and my mum's a better cook than my dad. So uh, we were really spoiled when we were kids. And whenever I would go and visit relatives, and they were eating like bits of ham with pineapple tin, pineapple on top, and little smiley faces or thindus, I would be disturbed. It would be like. I seen from the shining in the house, so I, I would never go over again. So I was lucky in that sense. But yeah, we just family restaurant. We, uh, my, my, my brother basically runs Qua Restaurant on Sixty Ingram Street now, which is um, the main restaurant that my, my brother runs. And that was it. That was it. We'd be we would be there. We would be the face of the restaurant, and uh, they are all consuming living organisms. Restaurants they take over your life. 
do people recognize you when you're in there working do they kind of say i recognize you from somewhere do you still get that now I suppose like in the restaurant there's been a few reviews where people still cite the review in terms of like in the in the print media and online. My hair's different. I wear glasses now. Yeah. These are my rose, my rose tinted spectacles that I have to view life from. And uh, so yeah, people still do in certain not in general, you know, I don't think so in general. I think people I think reality TV now is a very different beast, isn't it? Yeah, so of course. people don't. The people of a certain generation obviously have no idea. Other people would probably like. Well, there's no point in saying it. So yes, that the I do get re recognised in the restaurant, but sometimes people will, will like will recognise me more from Bow Selector because they still show that at night sometimes, yeah. or, or reruns on music t music TV channels that don't show any music will show it and stuff. So people will still see random stuff like that. That's it. Some people ask me if I look like. If they think I look like an actor, and I do yeah, my you know. joke that we've done at the beginning of this when I go Denzel Washington, but they mean someone else. <laughs> well, Federico, <laughs> thank you so much for, for joining me because I was gutted when you couldn't make the reunion. Uh, so thank and thanks for being the first person to say go and get a drink because have I a missed. drink. Give me a cheers. Give me an actual cheers. <laughs> it works. It works. There we go. Really well done on the amount of work you've put into this. I re I sincerely apologise about not the first night because I, I did feel bad after it because but I'm glad you got the other housemates. I'm glad that this has came together from you and whatever you're hoping comes from this if it shines a bit on you and what you can do journalistically I hope it works and good luck to you my friend. Oh thank you so much I really appreciate that thank you. Thank you sir take care.